we should probably think about having at least five properties under this company to make it feasible for the bank. <laughs> Hi guys, this is the second part with Marcel. Uh, we already had one uh, video where we discussed with him uh, how you can get a, a visa by opening a company in, uh, in UAE. Uh, in, in this video, uh, Marcel, I want to ask you a few questions uh, about registering the property under the company's name. Uh, there are such requests uh, from the clients. Uh, so let's say if somebody comes to you and asks this question, uh, what would be your suggestions and uh, what are the fees related to this and uh, how long it will take to register such company? Uh, it's quite a popular question and of course there are several tools and instruments on how you can reach the goal. Uh, to us it all depends on the ultimate goals of the client. There are some cheap solutions on um, registering, let's say, an offshore entity. In the UE, there are two different jurisdictions, uh, one of which is uh, in Dubai, another one is in Ras Al Khaimah, and uh, further register the property under the name of the company. This is one of the most basic and most uh, budget options, uh, just for the purpose of holding that real estate assets. If, uh, if the goal of the client is to further make this uh, property of a commercial use, let's say if they would ever rent it and they want to accumulate some profits on the bank account, then of course we, we should consider about uh, the, the, the local resident company, maybe in the free zone, uh, that will be able to open the bank account and register the property at the same time so that uh, the, the further management and the profits would be managed from that bank account. Mm -hmm. So first option that you said, it's to register the company even without the bank account, correct? Yeah, it is possible, yes, mm -hmm. and this will be cheap. Uh, 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 it's a very rare option, I assume, like many people who are buying, they're considering to rent uh, uh, the property, so... Um, but still, uh, tell us, what would be the price to just open the company or just to register some, uh, some property under it? Uh, the cheap option. Okay, the, the cheap option would start probably from around three and a half or four thousand US dollars. This will include the company incorporation fees and the uh, no objection certificate from that particular jurisdiction uh, to register the property under that uh, entity. Now, if we uh, if we consider the option in, uh, for instance, free zone in Dubai, uh, the budget will be a lot higher. Um, can reach up to twenty-five or twenty-six thousand dollars for the setup of the company. Um, let's say the bank account, and then having the same no objection certificate from the registry to register that property under the entity's name. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how long will it take to, to set up such company? Uh, well, again, I would probably tell you the average and uh, and the maximum time. The average time would take uh, four working days, that's for the cheap options. And uh, if we're talking about more complicated setup as in Dubai free zones, uh, it may take up to one month. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, can another company, which is not based in Dubai, uh, can they own the local company that is buying the property? So l let's say there is a company somewhere in Caribbean, or British Virgin Islands, yeah? And uh, can they own a, uh, a company over there that will buy uh, other properties? Is it possible to do? Uh, it is possible. Uh, the, the only complication I see is uh, that any decision, um, any modifications to the company, uh, it should be uh, done on the level of that mother company that holds the UE company. And then uh, the, the only inconvenience in all this model is that the, the documents uh, should be attested by the ministries uh, since um, the UE didn't sign the Hague Convention and they do not accept the apostille. Mm -hmm. And there is one more thing that I want to say from, from my side as being an agent who is involved in the transactions that uh, the government over here, they will always ask to show who are the ultimate, how we call it, ultimate beneficiary of, uh, of the company. That's correct. Yeah. So there could, they could be chains of the company that owns in the, the property, but the government over here, they will keep on uh, asking who are the ultimate uh, beneficiaries, people who own the company. And in case if there will be any changes of uh, the ownership, uh, the land department over here will ask you to 
uh, to pay the transfer fee. Uh, just to give you an example, let's say we will not consider the chain of the company. Let's say uh, Marcel and I, we own, or let's say I own a company uh, over here in Dubai that owns a property. I just bought a property. Uh, and uh, before what was possible to do, I could come to Marcel and say, Marcel, buy my company and uh, you will have as well the property. So you see now he owns uh, the company, now he can get the rental uh, money and stuff. Yeah, but there was no, uh, this transaction wasn't registered in the land department. So we didn't pay 4% registration fees. So right now the land department will ask who is the owner in the beginning and uh, who is the owner now. And in case if it's different people, they will ask to pay uh, the, the transfer fees. So this is, uh, this is how it works. And it's the same when there are chains uh, of, of the companies. And yeah, it might be a little bit complicated, but if you want us to clarify anything, uh, you can find our numbers in the description and uh, we will answer these questions. Uh, Marcel, what are some main mistakes in this uh, uh, part? Like when people are uh, opening the company to, to buy a property, what, what do you see? What is happening in the market? Uh, oh, we have a, a very fresh example, a practical example of what happened. Uh, a company held a property for last, let's say, five or six years and it had a valid bank account at that time. Uh, since newly taken regulations and amendments of the current policies in the banks, um, uh, the banks started uh, closing the accounts to a certain extent. So this company was one of those uh, cases when they had their account closed and uh, they didn't really oversee this um, situation and they entered into the deal with a potential buyer and they signed the documents and everything mm. for sale. So now technically speaking the company being an owner has no valid bank account but by the rules of the uh, land, the land department, uh, the buyer should pay to the seller directly as it's mentioned in the title deed. Correct. So basically what will happen, a company will have a check under the company name, but they which is not possible to pay cash. Yeah. But how can people protect themselves from so, such cases? Um, well, the, the first pr protection, as we always recommend, is to have as many bank accounts as possible. That's first of all. So it's, you cannot be based on only one bank account these days. Mm -hmm. You need to have at least one alternative account as, as a spare option. But let's assume that this case ever happened. Uh, if you're in a situation when, when you hold the uh, company that holds the property in its turn, it's probably time to think on how to change the title date. So that instead of your company, you need to put your name back again. Mm -hmm. So this wouldn't be classified as the sales and purchase, and uh, it would be uh, classified as the grant, mm -hmm. uh, like a gift, we can say. So there would be some nominal fees, but yeah, I think that's the only option. And uh, how easy or difficult is it to open a bank account for such uh, company? Uh, to be honest, lately it's quite difficult to open a bank account for any company. So. Uh, what is the reason behind it? Why, why it's yeah, the reason is that the, the banks, they are minimizing their own risks uh, based on uh, different factors, let's say the nationality factor or the business model factor uh, that the people may enter into agreements with sanctioned entities or sanctioned countries and everything. So it's mm. a multi-touch point approach uh, which is based on the risks. Uh, now, if we, uh, if we position the case that the uh, company holds only the property and it's leasing only the property as the core business uh, of the company, uh, this is not a bad idea, but we, we should think about the volume, the turnover of the uh, funds that, that is routed uh, from this account. Uh, because the local banks wouldn't be literally interested to open an account for a company which holds only one property and generates let's say 100,000 uh, AED or USD. So if we position the case purely as the property holding asset company and uh, that's the core business, uh, we should probably think about having at least five properties under this company to make it feasible for the banks mm -hmm. to oversee the volume of the uh, funds. And uh, let's say if uh, uh, I'm worried that uh, I might not get a bank account, is it possible for me to buy a company with existing bank account? Uh, you may, absolutely yes. Um, uh, the thing is, it's not a very popular model in the UE. Uh, for instance, if we compare the practice in, in BBI or Seychelles or any of those 
small uh, jurisdictions uh, when they have hundreds of shell companies ready for, for sale. It's not the case in, in the UAE. Yes, it is possible to find either offshore company or onshore company with the active bank account, but then it's, uh, uh, we can say it's not a usual case. Yes, you, you will have to be behind it and look for options and ultimately you will find. And the thing is that the prices would uh, drastically differ because if it's a ready business with ready bank account, probably uh, the budget can go up to three or four times more. I see. And who will do the uh, audit of that company to, to make sure that there is no debt uh, that the company has? Uh, how does it work? Is it you who are providing the service or somebody else? Uh, we do provide such services and uh, in general if we are uh, looking for available options we actually rely on our sources that we've checked uh, through the past and our experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course, we are uh, preparing the uh, audit uh, statements and general uh, report on the company to uh, to state that there is no loan obligations, there are no contractual obligations and that the company is fully uh, uh, insolvency. Um, yes, uh, only in that case we, uh, we are going ahead with the deal just to make sure that both parties are satisfied and safe. Guys, as you see there are a lot of different options and a lot of uh hidden things in, in all of this and uh, uh, obviously the easiest way to discuss this is to get in touch with Marcel. Uh, I will leave his uh, contact uh, number and uh, email, you can text him by the WhatsApp and send him an email and uh, Marcel will clarify this, uh, these things because uh, as once again a lot of different options and there are different cases and we cannot uh, say that uh, there is uh, one right solution for... Right, uh, there is no perfect it. formula, it yeah. all, always depends. Okay, Marcel, thank you once again so much for thank your time. You, Dennis. It I was appreciate. a pleasure. And uh, guys, please leave your questions in the comments under this video. Maybe from time to time, Marcel will come and answer uh, them uh, in the comments on YouTube. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.